Hello everyone and welcome back to Zaklit Educational Channel. So this is five star revision for the UGC NET examination of Environmental Sciences. In this revision, that is the Rapid Revision Part Thirty Three. So we will be knowing five very frequently asked questions and concept coming in the Environmental Science examination. So get ready with your notes so that you can note down all these important points, table, whatever we are discussing in this video. So before starting, I would like to say that we have already made this playlist. That is the very important revision playlist. If you haven't checked, you can check the link given in the i button and see all this video. So let's start today's video. So first thing which we are going to know today is the frequently asked concept from the El Nino and La Nina phenomena. Yes, these questions are very frequently asked. We will know. So from the definition itself, we will note down. So what is El Nino? El Nino refers to the average above average sea surface temperature that periodically develop across the east central equatorial Pacific. That means the sea surface temperature of the east central equatorial Pacific region that is the El Nino. So it represents the warm phase of the Enso cycle. What is this Enso also you should note down? El Nino sudden oscillation that means Enso El Nino sudden oscillation cycle this is the warm phase in which the sea surface temperature develops across the east central equatorial pacific similarly the opposite is la nina la nina refers to the periodic cooling of the sea surface temperature across the east central equatorial pacific so the location is same that is east central equatorial pacific but el nino is the warm phase of the enso cycle that is el nino sudden oscillation but la nina is the cool phase of the el nino sudden oscillation cycle where that is what it is the cooling of the sea surface temperature so sea ka jo surface temperature hota hai wo periodically thanda hota rehta hai la nina cycle ke chalte hue so here one more concept is asked from this concept that is the meaning sometimes yes el nino means the little boy or the christ child in spanish whereas Once upon a time, it was asked that La Nina means what? So La Nina is also a Spanish term, which means the little girl. So these two things are also important. This is the basic thing. No need to go deep. Just I wanted to tell you El Nino, La Nina, where it is occurring, and what is the warm phase, what is the cool phase, and what does they mean? So now it is important also to know the key differences between these things. Note down. This is a very important chart. Key difference between El Nino and La Nina. we know the definition we know the meaning also now we will know the differences one by one so these are the trade winds weakening in the pacific region pacific ocean these are the trade wind become stronger than the normal so the trade winds when become stronger than the normal days it is called as the la nina phenomena and when trade winds they are weaken in the pacific zone it is called as the el nino phenomena next is warmer water accumulate in the eastern part of the pacific cold water accumulates in the western part of the pacific which we learned in the previous slide next is reduce upwelling of the nutrient rich water leading to less fish yes when the temperature increases the nutrient upwelling reduces whereas the fishes are unable to get the nutrients as a result they die but here temperature less so upwelling of the nutrient that means this is the upper portion of the sea this is the lower portion so from lower to upper portion the nutrient goes that is the upwelling of the nutrient as a result the water leads more fish yes rich in more nutrient fish will be benefited so more fish so here no nutrients is passing from the bottom to top that is upwelling is not taking place reduced upwelling in el nino so that's why leading to less fish i hope you have understood If you are not able to understand, you can ask me in the comment section. Coming to the next point, next point in the Indian context, so it weakens Indian monsoons and increases pre precipitation in North America. So if El Nino is occurring, then Indian monsoon is weakened and we get less precipitation, whereas North America gets more precipitation. Next is when La Nina comes, that phenomena occurs, then it results in better than normal monsoon in India. Yes. during those years when la nina approaches india that phenomenon then it leads to more than the normal monsoon pattern that is the more than the normal precipitation in india 
Next is the frequency also it is asked in the examination. El Nino is more frequent but La Nina is less frequent. How? Because El Nino event occurs every 3 to 7 years but La Nina occurs half the amount of time El Nino events do. So this question also came in assertion and reasoning. So in one statement it was written La Nina occurs half the time of the El Nino or it was written that El Nino occurs twice the time of La Nina phenomena. So this is the thing which you should note down. El Nino is very frequent and La Nina is less frequent and you can say El Nino occurs twice the time of La Nina frequency. I hope you have noted down. Let's move on to the next important frequently asked concept. So guys, next point is about the short-lived climate pollutants. Yes, we all know that those who are greenhouse gases, they're having global warming potential and they are also having atmospheric lifetime. That means in the atmosphere, how much time they are remaining. So this is the thing you should know that is the opposite of that. That is short-lived climate pollutants. What are they? They are black carbon, methane, tropospheric ozone and hydrofluorocarbon. So here it is not telling about the global warming potential because global warming potential of methane is how much? It is 25. So you will say that it is telling about the life of the greenhouse gases and other pollutants. So we will start one by one black carbon which is also called as soot. So it is a form of particulate matter and therefore it behaves much differently than the greenhouse gases. So it is not the same function as greenhouse gases because it is a form of particulate matter. It does not become well mixed in the atmosphere. Particles remain suspended in the air until they settle back on the surface. So they become washed out by rain or contributed to cloud formation. So as a result, they are not long living in the atmosphere. They are short lived climate pollutant. Coming to the next thing, methane CH4. It is a live fast die young greenhouse gas that means methane traps very large quantities of heat its global warming potential is 25 but in the first decade after it is released into the atmosphere but it quickly breaks down so in the first 10 year it is more dangerous because it will contribute for more global warming but its atmospheric lifetime is how much it is 12 years yes you should note down methane atmospheric lifetime is 12 year global warming potential is 25 so both are different thing but it is short lived because within 12 years it is broken down in the atmosphere next is tropospheric ozone yes tropospheric ozone is also a greenhouse gas but unlike the other greenhouse gas it is a primary component of smog smoke plus fog you all know it is also one of the frequent last concept so in the smog it is the primary component that is tropospheric ozone it is not directly emitted but it is instead the product of the atmospheric reaction of a number of precursor pollutants. That means it is telling about it is a secondary pollutant. Primary pollutants are directly emitted but tropospheric ozone is secondary pollutant. That means if other pollutants they combine they make this ozone that is tropospheric ozone. So these are key points you should note down because anything can come from here. So here including methane, nitrogen oxides, volatile, organic compounds, carbon monoxide. So these are the primary precursor. Those reactions are leading to the formation of tropospheric ozone. Next coming to the fourth one that is short lived climate pollutants that is HCFCs. So it is HFCs actually hydrofluorocarbon not HCFC it is HFC hydrofluorocarbon. They are a group of chemicals manufacture for used in refrigeration yes it is used in acs also it is used in the refrigerators it is used as an insulation foam and they are aerosol so here hfcs are short-lived climate pollutants with a lifetime of between 15 to 29 years in the atmosphere so different hfcs are there so but the average lifetime in the atmosphere is very short-lived that is within 15 to 29 years they degrade so I hope you have noted on all these things, black carbon or soot, methane, tropospheric ozone and HFCs. They are short lived climate pollutants. Important points were discussed here. Let's move on to the next very frequently asked concept. Next is actually not a concept. It is actually a very important and frequently asked chocolate numerical. Why chocolate numerical? Very simple to clarify this thing. That means to know this formula. 
the question comes like this the molar conductivity of a 1.5 molar solution of an electrolyte is found to be 138.9 Siemens centimeter square mole inverse the question will be asked calculate the conductivity of this solution so how to know this is the Brahmastra formula you should note down molar conductivity that is lambda m is equal to k into 1000 by c where k is equal to conductivity and c is the concentration don't get confused not k is not concentration k is conductivity c is concentration and molar conductivity we can find out with the help of this formula so here what we have to do in this question everything is given we just need to find the molar conductivity so here we have to find not molar conductivity you should read the question carefully we have to find conductivity here molar conductivity formula is there so we have to find k here so just replace all the values and we'll get the answer so we will get the value as 0 0.208 siemens centimeter inverse which is the conductivity of this solution so you can check this if it is correct or not so now let's move on to the next very frequently asked question so this is actually not the question this is the concept from the poison distribution formula so this thing you should note down because it is asked in the assertion and reasoning as well as we can get the numerical from this section so here poison distribution is mentioned as p in bracket x n is equal to number of finite trials x is equal to number of success turn and p is probability of success and lambda is given as np which is very important to note down it is the finite and positive value which is nothing but mean and we have to calculate the variance so for variance we can just simply can say that mean is equal to variance because in case of poison distribution mean is equal to variance so this is the very important concept you should note down and standard deviation is what it is root over of the variance every time we all know basics of statistics so here one thing you should note down mean is equal to variance that is n multiplied by p that is number of finite trials multiplied by the probability of success and standard deviation is the root over of variance or mean both whichever you can say now if you are going for the poison distribution we should also know about the binomial distribution so this is a little bit different than the poison distribution here mean is equal to same n multiplied by b p so variance is little bit different here because here q you will be multiplied so here mean is not equal to variance which was in case of poison distribution so variance is equal to n multiplied by p multiplied by q that means number of fixed trials multiplied by probability of success in one of the n trials and q means probability of failure in one of the n trials so if you multiplied all these three value we will get the variance and similarly standard deviation is the root over of variance that is root over of n p and q so these two are very important and frequently asked concept from the statistics binomial distribution and Poisson distribution you should note down all these things so see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself